Um, um, how many folks do we have remotely? We have Joe Feely and I think Andy Sturgeon. And we've got two more I'm about to promote. Oh, good. One, I think, is Angela. So Angela's joining us. Oh, the other one, you. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Great. So let's get started with do I want to join as a panelist? Yes. If you want to share your screen, you can do Okay. Okay, now I can see who's with us. <laughs> um, so let's start with welcoming a couple of folks who are new to us, at least one, um, a new member of T the TDI board, um, Peter Piccarello. Yep, yeah, welcome. So glad you're with us. Um, and we have stuff both people both in the room and remote. So we start with an agenda review just to see if there are any items that need to be adjusted before we move forward. Um, does anyone have anything to add or change? Um, this could fall under the discussion of Rico Thompson, uh, or it could be a separate line item, but um, uh, I, along with the town manager's office, would like to get clarity on the scope of the recode project. Uh huh. Okay. So I think that that will go nicely in that item five. Okay. Recode top zone. Thanks, Hap. Okay. Hearing no other changes, um, we'll move forward. And the way we've always done our meetings, Peter, is that when folks take the time to join us, we are delighted and you can participate along the way. We don't have, even though we on our agenda, it shows like we have a 10 or 15 minute period. We're glad to hear any questions or comments you might have now, um, but you can also pipe in along the way. Thank you. Yeah, so anything now as we- Nothing right now. Okay, glad you're with us. So starting with um, the administrative stuff, we had our October meeting on the 17th. Um, I sent out a PDF, but I also said if there were any edits, please make them on our Google Drive. And those minutes were taken. Thank you very much, Andy Mun Muncy. And he is taking minutes tonight. So any changes, corrections to those October minutes? No. Hearing none, I will assume that they are approved unanimously. Yes, give me a little nod. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't do the count as elegantly as Patty does, but I appreciate just that everybody is weighed in. Um, <clears throat> so I think we can have a quick update on the status of filling the position that we that Kate left. Um, whoever is up for doing that. Um, yeah, please, Derek. So we have a new uh, town planner coming to us on Wednesday. Her name is Julie Urban. She comes from Brunswick. She's been in Brunswick for the last 18 years. Uh, 14 of the most recent years, she's been in the planning office over there. She's worked her way up from the receptionist to the planning office to being the assistant to the director and various roles throughout. And, and our latest position is the code enforcement officer. <laughs> so uh, she's got a lot of experience and uh, we look forward to uh, receiving her on Wednesday and showing her around and introducing her to all the folks uh, here in Topsom. Can you repeat her uh, name? Yeah. Julie Erdman, E-R-D-M-A-N. Okay. Uh, she's excited about being here, and uh, hopefully, I can introduce her to all of you either Wednesday or a meeting following Wednesday. And we have a little bit of a pattern here in CPIC of sweeping new people right into a CPIC meeting on their first day. So, we did that with Kate, 
Um, and if Julie is able to join us for that um, noontime workshop um, on with Scott Hastings talking about his experience with form-based code, that will be exciting for us and maybe for Julie. Okay. Um, I would just add that I'm excited for Topsom that we're getting Julie. I've been able to work with her for years in her many capacities, and I feel like um, great work, Derek, and all at the town in getting her to come to us. Well, I was telling uh, Susan earlier that my relationship is pretty much severed with Brunswick currently. <laughs> so if it helped me mend that, that would be awesome. It will mend in time. Yes. <laughs> But this is good. This is good. Okay, good. so let's start um, on to our next big item, which is um, it's going to be a smaller item than originally uh, conceived, but there is a request in the works by Crooker for some rezoning, and um, we'll just see how what can be said at this point. Um, Andy Sturgeon will share with us where that stands. Thank, thank you, Susan. Uh, I think most of you know that, that my brother is the president and CEO of Crooker. So um, I'm talking to you in my capacity as his brother and kind of working with him as not as a hired consultant, but just as, as more as a brother and kind of helping push this along. And as you all are very, very aware, Crooker has attempted and pulled back uh, rezoning applications several times over the last few years for various reasons. And I don't think there's anything to gain by going into those individual reasons. Um, they are what they are. It just wasn't as uh, smooth a process as I think everybody had hoped. It's it's a complicated um, process. It's, it's um, important to the community and it's important to the neighborhoods that would be affected by this rezoning. So with that said, um, why is it different now than it was before? And, and the main reason that, that Crooker has taken this initiative now is, I guess when, when you finish the 2019 comprehensive plan, there was a lot of um, chatter about, I think it was the first time it was labeled the Crooker Quadrant and how important that is in the, in the development, especially the economic development of the future of, of Topsom. So, that, that thought just kept growing and growing. And then we saw it again in some of the CPIC meetings. And then we saw it again in, in some of the TDI meetings. And again, finally, it came out in the um, market analysis report that was just um, released to the board and to the public in the last six weeks. Um, it plays a, a very important role and it does play into the plans of Crooker. So when we look at what's the best way to make this happen? Um, we have sent in a letter and a map to the, to the uh, select board. And hopefully I think it's on the 15th of December, we'll be able to present that letter and map to the select board and they'll make the decision on how the process could move forward over the next say six or eight months. Um, in the interim, if, 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 and I assume that it will be received well on the 15th of December, then at some point there'll probably be a, a public meeting and uh, there'll be a lot of, lot of time to prepare for that public meeting. And during that time, Crooker will be soliciting support in the community. Um, they'll be doing some studies and hiring some professionals to, to uh, back up their, their uh, position. The, it's better for the community for Berker to vacate the site that, that they're on now and move to another location, which would be an expanded industrial zone next to their existing industrial holdings. And I guess it would be the Northwest quadrant or the Westerly quadrant of um, the town, which is out by the, uh, the, the river uh, next to some existing gravel pits that they already own that are zoned industrial. So um, I, I, what I did is I sent, I sent the letter and the map to Susan and asked her, could CPIC look at this and start to think about giving us um, a letter of support? And I guess I didn't expect it to happen this quick and get on the agenda this quick. So um, really haven't had 
uh, chance to present to the the select board. Want to have that chance hopefully on December fifteenth, and then uh, we'll be coming back to to different boards and different groups and leaders in the community to get input both for and against, just so we'll be more educated when we move forward, hopefully to a successful rezone. And that's just step one of this whole process. Remember, if it is rezoned, then we need to start a permitting process, which will go through the planning board. It'll go through the state DEP, probably take a year and a half of, of uh, um, studies and professional consultants presenting to the planning board in the state. And just uh, will be a long process. We feel that um, with the amount of acreage that we have, out there, which I think is close to 200, that will be able to build significant buffers to meet all the, the uh, requirements of the town for sound and visibility and traffic and all the different things that you have to get approval for and make sure that they work harmoniously into the environment, the community that they will be relocating into, hopefully. So that's kind of where it is right now. Um, I, I, Gladly attempt to answer questions, but uh, you know, in a nutshell, that's a thirty thousand foot view of where we are today. Thanks, Andy. Um, I think sometimes it's helpful with these very large projects to start with a thirty thousand foot view <laughs> and work our way into the specifics um, over time. So we're not being asked for anything today. Um, and at some point after that um, request is presented to the select board, um, we will see what comes out of that. And we will have something to consider based on um, that decision. So great, knowing that that comes down the road, that's wonderful. Um, and, and I think it's a healthy thing for us to see you know, it's the comprehensive plan of 2019 in action. You lay out a vision and it starts to materialize in some very real ways. Um, and this is one of those ways. Um, so it's, it's a good thing for us to be able to think about it and talk about it, um, even in the absence of a very specific request and maps. So um, any thoughts, Joe, go ahead. Uh, just quick question. Will you be sending out uh, that map and any uh, additional information prior to the planning board, uh, the uh, select board meeting on the 15th or? I, I, there's a couple tweaks that I need to make to the to the letter and to the map. One of the things that we found out is the map isn't quite as clear as it probably should be. So we're gonna we're gonna make some tweaks, and um, if we can get that out before, we will. If not, it will be the day over the day after. Okay. Andy, just just we, uh, curious. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. This is Derek. Uh, what we typically do with the agenda is it'll come out a week before the meeting, the select board meeting. So it'll be available to everyone on our website. Okay. Thank you. There you go. That's right. All of the all of the materials that are going to be considered by the select board. Um, will be attached to that agenda. So this voluminous background. There you go. It'll be a week before the meeting. That's right, At a least. week before the meeting. <clears throat> okay, any other thoughts? I have a question. Yeah, sure. Um, Andy, any reason why um, this proposal wasn't presented to the planning board? Um, uh, state law on rezonings is, is uh, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's not complicated, but it, it lays out a process in the process. I think according to our lawyers and maybe even the town attorneys is that it go to the select board and they decide what the next step is. I don't think it goes directly to, to the, the plan. Well, I know it doesn't, isn't required to go directly to the planning board. With that said, I think there are options where you can go to the planning board. You can go to the select board and maybe you can just give it to the town manager too. I'm not sure, but there are different ways. Um, and we just felt, and we had taken advice from you know our, our consultants that the best process at this time was to present it, present the application to the select board in this type of town government. 
So the process in which they desire to go would be to go to the select board. If the select board decides to go any further, the planning board by statute would have to hold a public hearing. No action necessarily has to be taken by them after the public hearing. Then the board of selectmen will also have to do a public hearing and then make recommendations on whether it goes to town meeting or a referendum. Or another option altogether could be, you know, that Cricker wants to petition to get put onto a town meeting or a referendum. Mm -hmm. We so prefer not to go the petition more, route, but right. This is more of a public process. Yeah, right. I think that the route that they're going. Yeah, uh, many people will be involved. They'll be able to speak their minds. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts at this point? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. As far as uh, CFRIC is concerned, you know, I, I reviewed the the letter in the. And the map as well, and had you know some general comments about clarity and content. But I think the broader question is for this committee is a how we're you know, how we handle requests like this as far as responses. Is it through the select board? Is it you know a direct response? And also um, getting our heads together and clearly tying it to the comprehensive plan and our response. I mean, that's pretty much, you know, our role as this committee is, you know, so we as a committee, you know, responding to this, I think we need to uh, really digest it and uh, outline that response with, you know, specific reference and tie into the, the comp plan and uh, implementation. I mean, we've one of the things that we've seen in the past is depending on what is being asked for in a project, bits and pieces of the comp plan can be quoted to support different points of view. In the Bible. So, <laughs> so what we're going to be, I think, called upon to do is to review very carefully what the request is, what the plans are in terms of all of the various, the benefits of the move, uh, the, the mitigation being planned um, and how it, you know, the, the comp plan is a vision and it has a number of specifics, but overall it's a vision. Um, it's not legislation. So we're not, we're, we're really focusing on the spirit of, and the vision of the comp plan. Um, there's no letter here, you know, to be, um, and, and we're premature, but if in terms of saying anything specific right now, but our role is to, if we're asked for a letter of support, to consider all of the materials and um, do our best to see whether or not what's being requested is in line with the comp plan vision, um, and if it's not squarely in line, if it's not opposed to, so it's, you know, there are a number of things to be considered there. Yeah. Thank you, Anne, for clarifying. You, that letter of support is your request is after the select board presentation. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Good. And I had said in our meeting announcement that I would be forwarding that to folks before this meeting and then realized that that was premature. So I just didn't do it. <laughs> Thank you. So um, moving on to uh, number five on our agenda, recode Topsum. Um, we've had a couple of important meetings um, outside of our formal monthly meeting. Um, and uh, one was that, um, and I think we, we have reported this in October, that Rick and I met for some considerable period of time with the chair and the vice chair of the planning board. And <clears throat> subsequent to that, Hap and Kate, um, the day before Kate's last day, were they had scheduled a meeting with uh, the consultants. And um, I asked to attend that. And 
Thank goodness, because I came away from the meeting with the chair and vice chair of the planning board with some misconceptions about what we were all agreeing to. So now I'm straightened out. Me? Maybe, we'll see how that goes. But first, let's start with just a little update for folks about what transpired on that late afternoon, which was the 20th of October. Um, Rick and I sat in, there were a number of other folks, and I'll just let you give a little bit of an update, Rick. Yeah, so yeah, it was primarily uh, kind of a, a transition and update with the consultant um, on Kate's last day and, you know, getting some folks on the same page about where where the consultant's at in, in their role. Um, you know, essentially Susan and myself, um, Mark and Derek have Kate, and um, Don and Scott from the planning board, along with uh, Tom Lister uh, from Cole's office, and had both Kirk and Wesley uh, online for that. Uh, and basically, it went through again the usual where they're at on the timeline, basically completed with the phase one work and into the phase two work of developing uh, a draft for town's review. Um, there, you know, he iterated that his scope called for three drafts and he's about, they're about 90% done with the content for draft number one in Kirk's mind. Uh, so we went through a little bit of, you know, recap on the process they're going through cleaning up the, um, cleaning up the code provisions, talking a little bit about the form base. Um, there was a fair number of questions from the planning board about, you know, what it meant by cleanup and what it is going on because they haven't review those drafts yet. And that kind of led to a similar theme with a lot of people. Pretty much everyone at the table appeared to be at a different stage of understanding on where we're at in the process, what has been distributed, whether what's been distributed is reviewed, <laughs> and a fair amount of question on where where the request was left off when when Rod um, when Rod left right at the time we were sending the the memo to the consultants about readjusting their scope and how extensive the form base would be in that and what the Rico effort was on the code to clean up. So the you know I think the, the gist of that was the Leslie had provided an update to the to their deliverable in August and with the various transitions that you know did not get wide distribution and the response to the directions memo, which Kate provided, um, really didn't have a clear answer to the consultants on what the what the outcome of that memo or what that outcome of that um, yeah, you know what the outcome of that um, scope moving forward would be. Um, the gist of it is um, there was some questions about you know, how far to advance the form-based codes versus just the code cleanup. Um, there was clarification from Kirk that you know 
it's possible, but not doing them in parallel would create um, some type of, you know, basically a, a donut in the conflict of some of the provisions um, if they were not adopted, at, you know, simultaneously, or to step back and rework some of the cleanup if it was out of context. Um, Also had a bit of a sidebar discussion about pilot sites and test cases and the geographic bounds of what we we're looking at for the form based code. Uh, there was a bit of back and forth and, and uh, understanding between the various folks at the table, but the gist of it was that the geographic boundaries that we had been discussing three meetings back, back in uh, July, August timeframe, um, was still what we're envisioning as being form based applied to the growth area only. Um, and the pilot or test cases, um, there was differences of opinion or understanding on whether those would be before or after the code was presented for adoption or if those would be kind of like working session test cases. Um, so hey, the, the gist of it was it, it Kind of highlighted the value of having multiple different groups um, in more regular communication on, on the status of each of these items. And one of the things the planning board had, I think we had brought it up in our meetings with the planning board, but they kind of reiterated it on the 20th was trying to identify a liaison in the planning board um, who can focus a little more attention on the uh, recode effort. So that's, you know, where it left off um, is that um, I believe Mark was going to regroup with the consultant and recalibrate say, where where they're at with the scope and where, where they're going uh, for the next steps, um, both in terms of scope timing, budget, and, uh, you know, path forward on mm -hmm. how we're going to tackle, tackle this. It was actually Derek. Was it Derek? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Which we had that yes. meeting. And um, and then what happens going to go in a few minutes is we've discovered since Hap and I have been spending more time reading the drafts, Hap even much more so than me, but we, he's found some new areas that really he thinks should be addressed in the code cleanup. Um, and he's gotten the stiff arm from Kirk saying, wait a minute, I wasn't supposed to do stuff outside the growth area. So before we get to that, because that, that's an important update, let's just see if anyone has any sort of questions or need of clarification about what happened there on October 20th. With and it was it was a very helpful meeting to have all the players involved. You know, the full planning department, um, Mark and Derek, planning board, CPIC. Um, so I found it very helpful to sort of clarify some things, and there will be more clarification today. But let's just see if there's any questions before we move on. Joe. I'm uh, just curious what the whether there were any serious ramifications uh, that came from that meeting that would alter uh, our working assumptions going forward, or is that premature? Well, what I would say is walking away from that meeting, um, my sense of what we were doing moving forward was intact. Okay. That the vision, the boundaries that CPIC has laid out that was previously discussed with the consultants, that those are intact and we're moving forward. It sounds like we're gonna learn something new. 
connect. <laughs> but before we do that, um, I mean, the, the one thing that I would say, just to make sure that, because um, sometimes I need to hear things a couple of different times before they actually <clears throat> sink in, is, um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that the planning board leadership thought we were agreed upon is the idea that um, <clears throat> pilots or test cases would be the beginning and the end of form-based code, that we were just going to do form-based code on a pilot or two or a test case or two and see whether or not that is successful or not. And that was not our vision at all. Our vision meant was that the entire um, geographic boundary um, slightly pulled in from the north and the west, I guess, um, would be form-based code or a hybrid. And that pilots or test cases, if any come along, would be fascinating, would be very helpful. Because I think when we went through the process of talking about 99 Main Street, current code versus revised form-based or hybrid code, it was an eye opener to all concerned, including us and the planning board. So that got clarified that we're not just talking pilots or form based. Angela. Well, I would just say that I am certain everyone on the planning board did not believe that the whole of our work with form based code was pilots. And I know that for sure. Human beings, we're a funny bunch. <laughs> and that's why sometimes we need to sort of say things two or three different ways to make sure that are we, are, is it, are, do we have a shared understanding of what we're talking about? So, you know, I think we're getting there both here at the implementation committee and on the planning board. And now I think we can open it up for some more clarification from Hap. Is that? Well, actually, uh, Susan, I'm seeking clarification from CPIC. Um, so, and, and basically, it's in relation to the scope of work that was given to the consultants for the recode project. Um, and the reason I ask that is, well, for several reasons. First, um, I have in front of me document dated April 5th, 2021 from CPIC to the select board. And in that document on page two, CPIC says that we need to conduct a rigorous analysis slash diagnosis of our existing code as compared to the adopted division. And, um, and subsequently, there are um, other notes along the way um, about what exactly um, that rigorous analysis and diagnosis includes and excludes. Um, and so what we're trying to get a handle on is whether the recode initiative is essentially about introducing form-based code into Topsum, or does it also include the rest of Topsum that are not part of um, uh, that are not part of the growth areas. So I guess, you know, that's, that's the first question we're asking. And I'm just Maybe make, have to give a little more context while you're asking you talk about what happened. Um, well, well, okay. So um, the reason I'm, I'm asking the question is because um, as members of CPIC are well aware, um, the drafts of the work that's been done to date by Kirk are online. 
And everybody, not just planning staff or members of CPIC or others, have the opportunity to offer commentary um, on those drafts. And so, uh, laterally, when I found some time to sort of drill down into those drafts, um, I've, I've asked some questions of Kirk about the form and content of uh, some of the subject matter that um, is, um, is uh, the subject of what I think is a recode initiative. And apparently there is, um, I don't wanna say a lack of understanding, but uh, we're not on the same page in terms of what we think this, what we as staff think this recode initiative includes and what the consultants think it includes. So by way of illustration, um, I'll give you uh, some of the recent um, commentary, which by the way, is all online. Um, so you're looking at the chapters of the, the code beyond the center growth area. Yeah, absolutely. That Kirk is, that Kirk yeah, done. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, where we're having some differences of opinion. Um, so for example, on section 3.10.2, sub bracket A, uh, which is RCU rural commercial use. Um, I asked Kurt this question. I said, this is really a mixed use rural zone, which is not just for commercial uses. So why are we calling it a rural commercial use? Why don't we just call it rural instead? And Kirk's response is, we're merely carrying over existing nomenclature, which was our charge. Um, I, I asked him in another instance about the BP zone, said, if this is just an extension of the BP zone, why are we uh, not simply calling it BP? If it enables uses that are not allowed in the BP zone, then it really isn't just an extension of the BP zone along Route 96. Kirk's response was, these are questions we can't answer. We were not charged with rezoning the town beyond Thompson Center of substantially changing existing regulations outside of Thompson Center. So this goes back to the fundamental question is, what was the scope of work the consultants were asked to address? And uh, because it's not clear to me as a director of planning, nor is it clear to the town manager's office, um, uh, whether Kirk's responses are in line with the, the scope of work or whether whether we're missing something here. Okay, why don't I give, give it a start and people chime in. <clears throat> My understanding from the start, and, and I think this is a tough position for you, Hap, because you're so still the, the last man standing and you were not around for any of the development of the RFP or the initial agreements. But the, the rezoning issue is only happening in the center of tops in the center growth area. That's the rezoning. It, you know, to make that consistent with the comp plan vision. Beyond that, what Kirk is doing is eliminating inconsistencies, redundancies, cleaning up the code and making it more uh, user friendly in all kinds of ways. And at a later point, code changes to make those areas consistent with the comp plan vision can and will be approached, but that is not the scope that we gave to Kirk. Um, what Kirk is working on is the cleanup update best practices. It's all laid out very clearly in the project direction memo. And Leslie has been working on the town center growth area, form-based code, hybrid, pure, whatever. That's 
And, and those those two things knitted together are why we're we're thinking, and I think Kirk and Leslie have felt and have said to us that they feel that it, it should move forward together as two parts of one project. Does that help? Whether yeah, you like yeah, well, it or not is another well, issue, but that's I, the well, that's yes the, and no. I mean, the, the, I guess the question I would ask is. Um, I, I I understand the response, but the fact of the matter is the whole zoning code is 36 years old. Oh, it's more than that. Yeah. Uh, well, according to the background documents, it's yeah. 36 years old. But yeah. in any case, um, you know, if we're going through a comprehensive review of the zoning code in light of new directions that have emanated from the 2019 comp plan. Well, it's, a, it, it's not just the growth areas that have changed. It's, it's, there are a lot of areas in Topsom that have changed over the course of that period of time. And so why are we not addressing them? But that is well? a separate question. So you, you've asked the question of what's the understanding. I've given my response. I see a, a hand. Let's have Angela weigh in. Um, I just have a, a question and a comment. Um, have, I, I understand this is a difficult place for you to jump into, but I just have you seen the RFP that went out and the agreed upon scope of work, everything that we have? Because it's all clearly delineated our agreement with the consultants. Well, in fact, I have read the RFP, and to me, it's not all that clear, but. Um, but it was to those of us who were here and Rod was directing it and we came to what we feel is a clear agreement with the consultants. Um, and I just wanted to make sure you yeah. had seen the documents and the project direction memo, which seemed to me clear also. Yeah, no, I've read all that. Um, um, but, but to me, the the RFP was not all that clear. Yeah, I mean, well, I, along the same line, Angela, because I honestly lost contact with it. After the RFP went out, was there another uh, contractor scope of work that actually went with the um, consultant, you know, the final budget scope schedule contract with the consultant? There was, I believe, a contract, which we have not been privy to, but there is a contract, which I, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think that because that may have clarified some of the there may be a slight clarification between RFP and what was ultimately agreed on with the consultant. So but it have, should be have you seen the contract hat? Rod did manage the contract. I hope that you have seen it. Uh yeah, I'm looking for it right now. Rod had it. Yep. Um, I must have signed it. I know I probably <laughs> did. I had to look. You have a few but, things going on, Derek. No, but but usually if we count on having that on the shared drive or within the folders, I looked and I have to keep looking. Is that something that should not have been misplaced? If it was, it's just it's somewhere. I yeah. have to find it, or we could just get it from Kirk. Yeah. Um, so I'll get that. Um, but when I read the RFP, usually we try to stick with the RFP, right? That's why you award. Right. It should be based off the RFP. What I did not see in the RFP was what happens describing as stuff outside the growth center. Right, um, it was not in the RFP and I don't disagree. There's tons more work to do in this town besides what this contract does. For one, we had limited funds and this committee decided starting with this project as defined in the RFP and the contract with the consultants, it's the best place for us to start to move forward to implement the 2019 comp plan. And, As and, a and, second and, phase, boy, it would be great to also update the zoning outside of this area. But, but what was included outside the growth area is the cleanup update, but not a substantive rezoning at this point. Right. Because, we, you know, the, 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 the big question really was, as we started this whole process, 
what we what we looked at initially was would should we take on re, the recode in terms of one or two catalyst sites and as we looked at that and thought about you know this is an opportunity we have we decided to take on the full center growth area and now we've scaled it back slightly um, but that's that's the area where we think we can have um, the best impact in terms of uh, you know sticking one of the things the plan says is that you know the growth area is where it, it's already served by water and sewer um, not to try to extend that um, that that will will you know be a problem going forward in terms of our financial responsibilities. So to stick within that area, and then although I think it was not clear to all of us involved that the fact that the the area outside the growth area, as you say, happens its old code has not been subject to a, a, a important and needed revision, but that that was something that Kirk was willing to do um, an update and a cleanup on, that that would at least put us ahead and put us in a better position when this project is complete to take on next pieces. Shall we get Mark first and then Rick? I think what we're running into as we read it, what he's done is maybe this this donut mm -hmm. whole thing is that he's doing enough um to maybe to try to push the form base but it may be creating more problems with some of the other stuff mm -hmm. you know for instance there's some place i wrote in the comments yeah with regarding the subdivision law our old code pretty much tracked the state law and or deferred to the re reference the state law kept it simple so you knew tops them at the same definitions as the state yeah the Kurt, the way he kind of Kurt rewrote things, yeah. he's taken some text out of the state law, not others. So now it almost looks like maybe we're trying to do something different than the state, which could create a lot of problems later. Yeah. Um, another thing he did that looks like he made kind of need, needlessly complex is he took our or he took definitions where it used to be a definition sec, definition section up towards the beginning of the code and just yeah. listed the twenty words or whatever. Yeah. Now at the end of it, he's got an index of definitions, I guess. And it says, you know, any word that he has defined with an A, it's under the A. And then maybe there's no words with a B. So it says reserved for future um, words or something. Yeah. And so it's now gone from 20 words to 26 sections, some yeah. of which have things under or not. It's almost like you move things around just for the sake of moving things around. Uh -huh. um, so it, it's almost, as we look reading what he's writing, it's almost it's like, okay, what is the line draw? Which is kind of where it happens. Like if we're putting all this work into it, um, we don't want to make be worse off than we are today. Right. I think you, you definitely don't want to be worse off. Oops. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah. So I think to put a concise answer to the to the question at hand, and it was a little bit unclear early on. So we've had this discussion several times or tried to say it in different ways, but the gist of it was that the form based code changes were limited to the growth, the geographic growth area that we define and, and the area outside those, any code cleanup would not change the fundamental intent outcomes or zones provisions outside that that was too much of a heavy lift for this committee, the resources or the consultants at this time. So it was the cleanup was for clarity, but not for the intent or the you know changing the rules outside of the well, I, I, I guess so I would that, say that was the that was the understanding of the scope. Yeah, in, in response, yeah. Rick, that, that that that's sort of problematic. Uh, no, I, I so, but I don't want to get into that here because no. what we need to do is, I mean, there are two quite different aspects of recode. There's the form-based pure or hybrid. We have it. It's a it's a revised draft August. Um, that's the center of town. The the update cleanup chapters 
Kirk has done those chapters, they are available. And as problems get identified, those need to be discussed and handled. But the scope is the scope. And if, if, if there's the thought that we should be doing more right now, all I can tell you is no. <laughs> We're not doing more right now because that's we've we've bitten off the piece that we feel we can handle, and also that we feel that that the town can handle. Um, you know, if we are part of the process of um, leading this forward, there's going to be some education. There's going to be some new information. There'll, there'll be lots of visuals, um, you know, to illustrate what this. Uh, change is going to bring about, we hope, in the center of town, that change is not coming to the areas beyond the growth area. What's coming beyond the growth area is town code that is contradictory, difficult, finding one thing in different places. That cleanup is what's happened. And as challenges arise, they need to be handled as they arise. And my understanding is that will be a staff and planning board matter. But the planning board has indicated to us that that will work well for them. They have a heavy schedule. We know the planning department has a busy schedule is to take one or two chapters put an executive summary on that, identifying whatever's going on there, present that at the first planning board meeting of the month, and in the second planning board meeting, it will be on the agenda for action, feedback. That's my understanding. And if that process could move forward, that would be great. Angela. I just want to confirm. So, Mark, what you were talking about was related to the code cleanup, right? Not the recode in town center. Correct. Yep. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, Angela. Is we, we have two. We're not talking about the recode. We're talking about the cleanup and and getting some of these things clear. Right? Yeah. That's, that's part of the, what 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 happens bringing up in the examples he alluded to are are not cleanup. Um, but when we're faced with, well, that's not our charge as we read the RFP, well, what is it? I mean, if this is strictly recode within the growth area, that's fine. But uh, to what extent are we doing this to, to make it more difficult, not only on staff, planning board, but future development? Yeah, there's a, I feel like there's a conversation that's missing with all the staffing change. So the recode part is really what we're taking on as CPIC. Rod and Andrew thought it was really important that in conjunction with that, there was some cleanup of our existing old code that had been built upon over decades and some parts of it were sort of Frankenstein and just needed to be cleaned up. Rod and Andrew had a very clear list of what those things were and I believe communicated them clearly with the consultant. I hear Hap saying he's not familiar with that. So I don't know if it's possible to get some of Rod's time to get this missing bit of information, but it was really Rod, staff was leading that whole cleanup part. Then I would say from my perspective as a CPIC member, we weren't as involved in that at all as staff was. Right. Well, what I find, um maybe a little frustrating, Angela, is that when I present, you know, the types of questions that you've just referenced to Kirk and the response is, sorry, it's not part of our charge. It's an interesting question, but it's not part of our charge. That doesn't help us sort of move forward in terms of addressing that particular issue as part of uh, the zoning code update. Um, so there's a gap uh, between what staff has identified as problems or issues and what the consultant is willing to tackle as part of their scope of work. Um, and so 
what what is fundamentally unclear to us is that right now is what is the scope of work for the consultants outside of the growth areas yeah my recommendation would be you guys find the contract rod i'm sure can help you with that yeah. and see what actually the consultant committed to around this hap you know you're the new leader of the planning department if you and the planning board take stock and you don't think the cleanup that rod and andrew thought was important is important you probably can work something else out it seemed to me that some planning board members thought that cleanup was equally as important to the recode that we were doing at the time. So I just don't want to lose that hard work and thought that had gone into this before all the staff turnover. Um, yeah, and I, I, I hear you. Um, it's just part of it may be the transitionary process. Um, but, um, you know, part of it is, is, is also um you know uh, i guess you know I, I guess i'm asking fundamental questions about why it's so difficult to change the title of the zone for example from rural commercial to rural why is that so difficult you know um and for kirk to kind of come back and say well sorry but that's not part of our mandate i'm just kind of going that's uh that, that, that seems um i don't know if i was a little stunned by that response let's put it that way yeah i think i i think the short answer to that is because you know kirk's understanding is we're not changing the zones outside the growth area um you know the naming the naming conventions the classification for the zone that was not that was not the intent and they have provisions, you know, it wasn't the intent to change the subdivision law to not be aligned. So if the comments that he's making are doing that, then it's up, it's up to us as the town to say, well, no, you just changed the whole intent with this provision. So we need to work. Which I did. I wrote the comment. That. Right, right. So that's, but I think that's the underlying premise. I think what's confusing us maybe, or me at least, um is if he's not doing helping with this cleanup stuff why did kirk bother going through all those sections and reorganize them my understanding is that that's there's a considerable rewrite there of all those chapters so i think so, so why is he rewriting that but he won't do some of these other things have to ask for I think the answer, Mark, is that he and Rod and Andrew had negotiated, you know, talked about the changes that were part of the definition of cleanup. Rod and Andrew are gone. Hap has maybe a different sense of that. But, you know, for the consultant, he felt like he had clear direction. And now perhaps it's confusing to him. So my suggestion is let's find that contract. ASAP. We need the contract, but it, this is a, a time where Hap and what Mark has looked yeah. at to bring yeah. up to you because you've yeah. been involved to say, hey, here's what we're looking at right now. We, we've got some things that, are, that frankly, we, there's a little frustration with Hap. Yeah. Said. Yeah. These are small things that we think are just little things if you're going through the rest of the chapters outside of the growth area. Why don't you just kind of make it streamlined and simple for people to understand? And then with what Mark mentioned about the state statutes, uh, pieces of language coming out that that's that, that's a, an eyebrow piece for, for us well and that was obviously that was a separate section of the work that wasn't included at all in the beginning okay <laughs> oh, and I, think I, I want to bring it to your attention yeah. this has nothing to do with the growth area form no i get it's the outside i get it forming to and make it clear. my suggestion here is that as things come up in those chapters that you staff can re should recommend to the planning board the planning board is going to have a heavy role here in looking at kirk's revisions of those chapters outside the growth area the planning board is going to be heavily dependent on your recommendations you don't need to 
hash it all out with the consultant, hash it out with the planning board, and they're going to give feedback to the consultant. Um, these are just, to me, it's one thing after another. And if the, if the real dilemma is, do we call it rural commercial or do we call it rural? You know what? Maybe I'm missing a point, but just call it whatever you want. You know, it's like that. It, that is not something we need to impose on Kirk unless it's coming out of the planning board saying, this is what we want. But that was not their charge. Their charge is cleanup. And, and, and I hear you, you got dilemmas, you got some stuff to work out. But I think we have, as CPIC, given you everything we can in terms of our understanding of the scope. Um, and that it was not, you know, there are things that need to be changed in that area, but that's not what we're doing now. That's not what All we're right, doing. Well, then what, what we really need is a tidy definition of cleanup. Um, because that, that seems to be the fuzzy area right now. I think it's spelled out quite well in the project direction memo. And, you know, as a, um, a lay person, I found that very helpful, very readable. It may not answer all of the things that a professional planner would would need to hear. It doesn't but, answer the specifics on uh, outside of the growth area. When you talk about cleanup, there's, I can't find anywhere where it talks about specifically within the growth area. No, no that because it's not it's not clean up within the growth area. Yeah, All of that's going to be. We know what they need to do. I think this is just yeah. bringing up here. Just the, the cleanup is not within the growth area. It's beyond the growth area. The the, the cleanup is going to be right. happening by virtue of the code revision in form based code or hybrid. I, I think I think we've just highlighted the importance of having that works the presentation of the workshop in small bite-sized chunks yeah. section by section once they've been digested reviewed and then all the different stakeholders you know can weigh in on those comments that's the and he just highlighted the, the value of that that's one. right small the, the, the planning board needs workshop. to get there to get into the minutia <laughs> and i saw a, a hand from joe do you still have it? <laughs> well, I, I, what, what I'm hearing is that as far as the area outside of the growth area, that there's confusion maybe between cleanup of the code and changing zones. And one of the things that, that I recall was that changing zones, whether it's inside the growth area or outside the growth area, was not something that we were going to be addressing because it made things more complicated. And uh, in, in dealing with the, the main, let's take Main Street, for example. I think that between uh, lower, middle, and upper Main Street, there are three different zones, if I remember correctly. They don't conform in any way in my mind, to what's there now. I don't know when those zones are created, but we're stuck with them. We have to work work around those. So uh, I don't know if that resonates with anybody else uh, who's who's been involved with this process. But it seemed to me that that uh, changing changing zones, renaming zones, was uh, other than in the growth area. Uh, and it, even there, the borders weren't going to change, and that's why we currently have upper, middle, and, and lower in the in the uh, form or character based code. Um, does that correspond to other other people's understandings? Apparently not. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we, we knew right away that form-based code was not going to apply to anything beyond the growth area. And Leslie's zones, are, you know, I, I believe we're going to see, I hope we're going to see a, a new map um, 
because she has done some revisions, we have not seen a new map based on those revisions. It would be good to see that. Um, I don't know if that's something you've talked about, Pat, but I think I think the the chapter by chapter or two or three chapters at a time, working that process through with the planning board is the way to move this forward. Um, and I think we've given you all the clarification we can. And as questions and problems come up, let's stay apprised of them. Um, but so thanks for raising them. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> There oh, is my, no, no, I mean, we're not, we're not no, like this. No, it's, not at all. It's, we just, it's, as, it's, as happened, really we just wanted to show you the something we're going to go back to the consultants with saying we need to clarify this. But process. when we hear from the consultants, that's not within our scope. You know, right. that right. is right. a line being drawn. And that is consistent with our understanding that that's not the scope. So that little dilemma of what it is that staff perhaps with planning board would want to dig in and make some changes that's a different matter i don't know if there are certain things that you want to work on resolving but that has not been the scope given to the consultants so anything further before we wrap this one up I have a feeling it's not the last we're hearing of this. <laughs> There's not room right now, to, but I guess I've got the so the the initial question that we walked away with is where does the town and cold consultant stand on burning of the directions memo? At least we gotta go find the we gotta find a contract. Yeah. yeah. If, if they're living up to the contract, then so be it. If they're not, then we're going to ask them to make some modification. Well, and one of the things that I think we need to do is, you know, we've, we have now all seen, um, you know, as a result of that October 20th meeting, Kate sent out several documents so that we have them all in one place. I find that very convenient. And I don't know if folks have had a chance to look at Leslie's revisions. There are some very clear questions she has raised for Kate because she was raising those back in August. And of course, Kate's not here anymore, but there are some things that need to be discussed. And I think I would like to be able to reach out to Leslie and see if she can attend one of our workshop meetings so that we could actually look at her draft and have some conversation about it. Um, and I, I have been reluctant to do that because that's not been our role so far. We've always worked directly with staff reaching out to the consultants, but I think it's probably time, and with your permission, I will do that to see if we can perhaps in December, um, either for our regular meeting or our workshop meeting, um, you know, have Leslie with us and looking that over because we need to move forward with it. Um, have have you, for example, Joe or Angela, have you had a chance to, or, or Andy, look at that, those chapters that where she's, it's very quick to see where her changes are. She's, and she's combined um, some, um, and she's gone back to our nomenclature. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not using, yep. So it's all, it, it feels much more familiar. And, and there's um, the, the, setbacks and the building heights and all of that adjust as we move through lower, middle, and upper village. Um, you know, the building types, some are with permission only. I mean, it's, to me, it's, it achieves what we were asking for. Um, less granular, um, a little more um, common nomenclature for us. Um, I, I looked through it again today, and although questions come up, I think we need Leslie to be able to move forward and say, yes, this is it. It's, and we, and we want, this is what we want to take to the public presentation. You know, I know that Derek um, and Hap 
have both talked about how important it is to bring this forward to the public. And it absolutely is, but we haven't had this final discussion and uh, ability to ask questions with, uh, with the consultant. So any problem with my reaching out directly? Great, great. Let's see if we can do that for next meeting. Any comments about having looked at these? I've, I've gotten I've gotten into it, uh, and then some other things got in the way. I have to get back get back okay. to it. Okay. Any other folks? I I'll say that I looked it over um, with the intention of going back and reading it more closely, but I did look at it with my notes from the meeting when we had met with her, and I feel like um, that she adjusted it accordingly in my yeah. first review. Yeah. I mean, it, that's exactly what I've done is go through it and then come back to it. And I found myself able to digest more the second time around. And, and she did, it did feel very responsive to our comments that had been relayed to her by Kate. So. Yeah. I. I... I, I just have a little different opinion. I yeah, think it's kind of premature to have Leslie join us in December if we're not internally on the same page about the, the scope where and where they're going based on that um, directions memo. She's, That's I all. mean, she's, you know, she's dealing with the growth area. The questions are not coming up in the growth area. The questions are coming up beyond. Right. But it goes to overall consultant scope, and she is part of that overall consultant. She definitely is part of that overall scope, but I don't feel we ought to sit any further. We've lost about three months of time, you know. Um, and if anybody is in disagreement with that, please, I, I think we need to have that discussion so we know are we happy with this revision? We need to have a map that goes with it. Um, I think she has found some new. Uh, illustrations for the building types. Um, maybe we can find more still um, of those. And we're going to have a, a workshop on Wednesday that I think we're going to hear some, who knows what we're going to hear, but we'll hear somebody who's had some experience with Form Dates Code in Maine, in Standish. So. And Rick, I heard Mark and Derek say that they they feel like they think the scope of work for the recode in town center, everyone's on the same page with. So I'm comfortable moving forward with that while everyone else works out the, the code cleanup question. The only other thing I'd like to add kind of in support of what Rick did is I think probably the biggest thing I got on October 20th. It was nice to have everyone looking at it at the same time, you know, yes. planning yes. boards, staff, right. yeah. feedback, mm -hmm. consultants. Um, so, but tomorrow night, I think Don's going to have, because he at the last meeting, he had Scott asked to see if anyone wanted to kind of be a liaison or work with CPIC. Yeah. So hopefully he'll have someone named by tomorrow night, because if we didn't Great. have someone from planning board at that meeting, as might not be as productive a meeting as if we did have. Yeah, no, it would be great board. to have someone there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the intention was to have rotating uh, representatives from, from the planning board attend CPIC meetings instead of just one delegated person. But but I guess however, they do it, would be tomorrow. important to have someone. Yeah. I think hopefully we'll clear that, that up tomorrow. That would be great. However, they want to do it. Okay. Moving on to quite a short agenda item. We're going to end on time. Um, the matrix review project that Rick and Joe and I have been working on continues. We're nearly done. We've gotten through seven of the nine big ideas uh, in the, the strategy matrix. Um, it's a pretty clear process and it's very helpful to have three of us um, sort of coming to consensus on where are the things that need to be lifted up as priority um, or not. And um, I think the thing after that will be, um, my guess is by next meeting, we may have a chance to, to complete those last two. And um, I think the thing then is to look at 
and for all of us to, to review the assignments that we've taken on. Um, I think all of us have a different and more realistic sense of what that's about. Two years ago, when we started this, we were, you know, we had to, we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, what, what is the guidance for us as we meet with um, the town staff and de town departments or commissions. And we have, I think, a much better sense of what that's about. It feels more organic. And now we can move forward and have those conversations. Um, and if there's anybody on this committee who would be willing, and I'm looking at you, Angela, <laughs> <laughs> to look at that that um, you know spreadsheet of, of assignments, I would be glad to do that with you. Um, I just would love to not be the one. Um, yeah. I was the one, and we did it before, you know, as a group. But to kind of look that over and see if some adjustments need to be made, and then you know move forward. I think that is an important step after we finish the strategy matrix, and then whether it's sufficient to have a planning board member as a liaison to our meetings, or if we want whether it's once a month or every other month to have a meeting of that larger group, that might be a really good idea, um, especially after, you know, if HAP and the planning board have had the experience of going through two or three chapters and, you know, getting down in the weeds um, to, to come back and have that meeting of the bigger group, um, let's do it. Um, I am willing to help to go through the assignment spreadsheet and just sort of take stock of where we where we are, what maybe we need to adjust or not. Great, great. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate that. Um, okay, I have started just to let folks know I've started putting together a communications plan. It's rough and I'll continue working on it and bring it forward probably next meeting. Um, and I've you know tapped a couple of folks to work with me on that a little bit. So having said that, I think we're done. <laughs> Any parting words? Any thoughts here? Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Thank you for having me here. It's very helpful. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's been a while now, but I remember the point where I was asked, please invite the TDI board to come to all of our meetings. And um, it, I think that has really helped to have that kind of um, communication and partnership. And one of the things I will say is so over my career, I've put together numerous RFPs, and I've responded to numerous RFPs. Um, clarity is critically important, but clarity to one person is not necessarily clarity to the other people. Um, and I think by when issues come up, to have the interested parties in the same room and talk it through yes. to make sure everybody stays on the same page, as soon as the train goes off the track, it's hard to get it back. Huh? Yeah. Mm. The, by the nods of the heads, I, I yeah, you can hear what point. Peter was saying. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if you know, I think that's my encouragement is to get into those chapters and bring them to the planning board as quickly as you can, so that if there's uh, a, a larger meeting, to make sure that we're all on the same page, mm. um, let's have it. Okay. See you. Oh, I hope I'm, I hope that we're going to see everybody on Wednesday. Um, everybody who can. I know it's an awkward time of day, noon to one. I think Mark has sent out link. the link. Yeah, we'll do it this morning, Jen. Yeah, and I don't even know if I'm going to be here in person or online. I mean, Scott Hastings is certainly going to, you know, come via Zoom, and we'll we'll hear. You know, we'll hear what his experience is. Um, 
He's worked in a couple of different towns, but Standish is the one where he's. Um, and we now, you know, the more time goes forward, the more towns have actually used form or character based mm -hmm. code, whether it's pure or hybrid. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody's picked up this news, but the other consultants that we were considering are now working with Bath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come here. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a small world and cozy. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so mm -hmm. we'll learn something. Um, we'll see you all on Wednesday who can attend. Good. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thanks. Okay.